The goal of this Mission Workshop rake review is simple. To see if it's worth the very high price they charge for it and to determine if it's the bag for you. But if this is not the bag for you, worry not. Because at the end of this video, I'm gonna make some alternative recommendations for bags that I think might better suit your needs. Let's talk about the gist of the Mission Workshop rake. Made in the USA from San Francisco-based Mission Workshop, but the rake is easily one of the coolest, meanest looking, organizational friendly, but expensive backpacks that I've ever reviewed. It's advertised as an urban weatherproof laptop backpack. And it's got this awesome tactical vibe, but it's not too tactical. Not like, like I serve my country tactical, but like I'm kind of a bad <laughs> me, but also I got good taste. Tactical. Let's quickly go over some of the top features. Highly weather resistant fabrics, fortified by this weatherproof lining. That's like the great wall of get the out of here rain. Two really interesting front panels for all your organizational needs. A side access laptop compartment and a very nifty stowable water bottle holder which I have many thoughts on. Coming your way fast. The size is 22 liters. It currently comes in four color options and the Moss version is actually made from X-Pac fabrics. It weighs 3.3 to 3.8 pounds depending on the materials that you get. This version is 3.8 pounds. This is the bag when it's empty and this is the bag when it's fully packed out and worn on me. For reference, I'm five foot eight. And don't worry, yes, we're gonna pack it out throughout this entire review so you can see exactly what it fits. All Mission Workshop products are covered by a lifetime warranty against manufacturing defects and the cost of the bag is I hope you're sitting down for this one anywhere from 470 to 590 USD depending on the version of the bag that you get but if at any point in this review you're thinking to yourself 590 USD I would pay double for that bag can't put a price on the bag of your dreams am I right well if that sounds like you and you're gonna make a purchase or you want to find out more information we do ask that you do so using the first link in the description below reason being that link makes sure that you get the best price and we oftentimes have discount codes that link also helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube team so we can keep making the best bag reviews on the web thank you very much okay let's talk about the front of the Mission Workshop Rake <laughs> Where to begin? Guess the whole thing with this bag is like, it is complex. Like if you're here hoping that this is like a minimalist, easy experience, take the cursor of this YouTube video and go right to the alternative section at the end. Cause I'll give you some alternative recommendations that are similar to this, but they're gonna be simpler. Cause this dude is complicated, but I can do this. Let's start with the most important part of the identity of the rake. I don't know why I pronounce it like that, but that's just my thing and I'm doing it is this sort of front panel, right? These two pockets. They're secured with these buckles, which by the way, if you're like, hey, this pack is not expensive enough, I wanna add an extra 100 USD, you can do so and get Cobra buckles instead. But these buckles are interesting because they A, help to create a point of security and some additional features on the sides that we'll talk about in a sec. But on the flip side, they do limit access, right? So if you take these buckles off and you wanna swing the bag around to grab something, it's a lot easier to unzip these two front flaps without the buckles in the way. When the buckles are in the way, you know, your access is then, you know, you got an extra step. Also, one thing to note while I'm talking about the front and our head of videography, Margaret, pointed this out to me. She's like, that's like a 30 liter bag, isn't it? And we looked it up and it's like, it's like 22. And the reason is, is it looks a lot bigger than it actually is. It feels bigger. That's because the main compartment is actually kind of small. This whole thing, it doesn't have the capacity that it looks like, which is gonna be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you're looking for. Okay, features. Once you unbuckle these clips, you got the two front pockets. This front pocket unzips all the way and has one, two, three zippered mesh pockets in it. In contrast, the other pocket is only like a three quarter opening and it's just a sleeve. There's no additional organization within this pocket. Now, one very important thing to know about this bag is it's marketed as a weatherproof bag. It's not waterproof. Do not sink it underwater for 20 seconds and be like, my gear will be fine, because it won't be. But if you get caught in a storm, these materials are fairly weather resistant. But what's really that line of defense is this lining right here. You hear, you hear that crunch? That crunch is like the crunch in X-Pack, right? An X-Pack is highly weather resistant. So basically this is like a fortified water protective lining. And if you get the X-Pack version, it's like X-Pack on X-Pack. And you can have like crunchiest crunch party ever, but your gear will be very, very protected from the elements. All right, let's load it out with some different stuff to see how these front compartments pack. I got my Bellroy Venture pouch, Magic Mouse, keys in a gum holder, AirPods, some wires, notebook, shades, snacks, wallet, and a battery. That's a lot of stuff. Let's see how this works. Venture pouch, go ahead, pop that in right there. 
And I wonder, can I get my moleskin in there as well? I definitely can. And it should be noted for these front pockets, as with the whole bag with the weatherproofness, these are YKK PU coated zippers. Just another wall of defense against rain. It makes sense too. These guys are from San Fran. It rains a lot in San Fran. You want weather resistance if you're walking around the city that rains a lot. I connected the dots. I should have been a freaking detective. On the other side, keys on the keyring solution. I'm not crazy about this keyring solution because it's very inaccessible. It's tough to get to. And it's a very short leash. So it just makes getting your keys kind of a so I don't know if I'd keep my keys here, but for now I will. And because of the location, I'm gonna pop them in this pocket here, along with my AirPods. Zip it as close as I can. That kind of works. Wallet and a battery. On the other side, we'll put some wires and my mouse. Snack, dead center. My shades, where are you gonna go? I'll have to find a spot for you later. Go ahead and zip it on up. I gotta admit, I love these pockets. They're great for organization. I love organization. It's just that access that kind of gets annoying for me with these buckles. But do keep in mind, you can chop these things off if you want. Just cut them off, take them off. From there, let's move down here to a more confusing pocket. So I watched the Mission Workshop rake demo and they put a mouse and wires in there. I, I, I just wouldn't do that. Just like I wouldn't put anything fragile there because it's at the bottom of the bag. So those things might get smashed. One note I do want to make quickly too is I freaking love these zipper pullers for the bag. Like I wouldn't put these on a sophisticated office bag, but for this, like the tactical look, these zipper pullers are just very beefy and they're very functional and they feel great. For this bottom pocket though, I think a small umbrella and a tripod should be a good fit. Oh yeah, we're rocking and rolling with that. I don't know what the hell they were doing with their demo. That is definitely an umbrella pocket. And then underneath this little rain flap right here, you got another zipper pocket. It's pretty big too. It's about this size in the bag. Because of the shape, I think it's a good spot for a Kindle reader. If I had a light jacket too, that'd be a good spot for it, but I don't have a light jacket. So only the Kindle is going there. God, I love those zipper pullers. Flap down, front done. Let's talk about the middle of the Mission Workshop rake backpack. Got a really slim profile, no water bottle holder yet. These side compression straps could be used to carry things externally on your bag or to obviously compress your bag. But if you want to carry like a tripod or something on the outside, I guess that's a good reason to keep these guys. I'm not a carry things on the outside of my pack kind of a person, but if you're a carry things on the outside pack kind of a person, this works. Let me know in the comments below. Are you a carry things on the outside kind of your pack person? <laughs> it's a mouthful. I've never done it, but I know some of y'all like, like, like live for that. Let me know in the comments below. On the bottom, we have an external lash point. Good for hanging a carabiner. Yet again, hanging things on the outside of your bag, if that's what you're into. And now we're sort of working our way towards the main compartment, which is one of my least favorite parts of the bag. Reason being, lack of access. Because you get into the main compartment, you got this clip, which yet again, I'm not sure the purpose that it serves, but you can take it off, which I am gonna take off. And then after that, you have this Velcro flap. And then after that, you got the roly poly. And then after that, you're in. And it is utter darkness in there. Like, I'm not sure if I believe in ghosts, but ghosts like to exist in dark places. And if there's ghosts, they're probably at the bottom of this freaking bag. And there's no other way to access this main compartment, right? Some roll tops that I'll talk about in hopefully around nine minutes and 30 seconds have like back access. So you can unzip and then get into the main compartment that way. This though, not so much. So you're going old school. You're loading from the top down. All right, I'm gonna load it up with some stuff. I got a book, keyboard, tech pouch, sweater, reusable tote, and another tech pouch. Three tech pouches in one bag, why the F not? Now when this bag is packed out, whatever you put on the bottom, say sayonara to. You're not gonna see it for a while. Another tech pouch, sweater on top, tote. And then you got this zippered pocket right here against the back. Great for flat objects, let's throw a book in there. Bluetooth keyboard, zip it on up, roll it on up. Now we're rolling. The rake is here to rock. That should be their marketing slogan. That'd be such a good one. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about the back of the Mission Workshop rake. Top handle, big fan. Lots of space to move your hands. Well padded, easy to grab, fun to carry in tote mode. It's just a great handle. From there, let's talk comfort. Look at these shoulder straps. They are wide. Some backpack brands like Bellroy like to have these thin, sophisticated shoulder straps that come to an angle. That's all fun and games. But the reality is these thick shoulder straps are gonna help distribute the weight of the backpack across your chest much better and it'll just feel more comfy. These are wide. And you can see right here, we got some interesting stuff going on. This is uh, to be a part of Mission Workshop's modular ecosystem. You can like add components to this 
to carry on the outside of the bag for all you outside carry enthusiasts out there. We got a beefy shoulder strap, Duraflex hardware. And let me tell you, it better be Duraflex hardware at this price point. But one thing I'm annoyed about at this price point is we got a little extra danglage going on is we got this nylon webbing sort of loosey goosey right there. And the same thing at the bottom of the bag. Why do these American companies, Go Ruck and Mission Workshop, they charge like 500 bucks for bags and they're like, here's the best bag, but you're not getting a single dangle stopper, mother Get one yourself, Hashtag stop the dangle. Going a bit deeper into the comfort, we got great padding and ventilation on the shoulder straps and that's mirrored on the back panel. Overall, I found it to be a very comfortable bag. There's just no way around it. It's comfy. Case closed. If you do travel with this bag, we got a luggage pass-through holder right here. And this luggage pass-through holder freaking rocks because it allows you to carry your bag upright, not sideways. But here's one bad thing about the luggage pass-through holder. Is that like I said, ugh. It's a really tall bag. I got my Nomadic Tank suitcase here. I think it's the Nomadic check-in, final answer. The handle's a little on the shorter side for this, and sometimes it is for just big suitcases in general, right? And just notice, like when we try and put it on this suitcase, that the bag is significantly taller than the handle extends. This is obviously gonna vary on a luggage by luggage basis. So just be sure that your handle and the height of this bag are compatible, or if not, might be time to get a new suitcase. And if you need a new suitcase, you should totally watch our review on the best suitcases in one of these corners. Two last features to talk about. Number one, laptop compartment. It's a side access, which I quite like. YKK PU coated zipper, tons of that weatherproof lining in there. It does not specify the size laptop that it can fit. My 13 inch MacBook Pro fits with plenty room to spare. If I had to guess, I'm sure up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro would fit, but do not hold me accountable for that. Talk to Mission Workshop's customer support, they'll get you sorted. Overall, it's a solid laptop compartment, very well padded, especially on this back padding. I've always been a fan of laptop compartments that are uh, with side access. This one is one of the better ones that I've seen. Yeah, really nice. Wow, that's some beefy padding. And now, for the grand finale of features, we have something that is muy interesante, which is a doable water bottle solution. Now real fast, if you made it through the 21 minutes I assume that we're at this point and you're a big fan of the channel, you might know that I'm actually building my own backpack here on Nomads Nation, documenting the entire process, and we're adding a stowable water bottle solution as well. That's so cool that they have one, that we have one. And if you wanna learn more about that and get involved in the process, be sure to check out the second link in the description below. That link will show you more about the Building a Backpack project, where we currently are, and you'll get some surveys right away to help vote on the product that we're making. The backpack's turning out really awesome. Our stowable water bottle holder is pretty freaking cool. Be sure to check it out. I hope to see you in your inbox. Back to this guy. The water bottle itself is made from a very soft, smooth, silky, elastic material. So it's got a nice stretch to it, which means it can fit a whole bunch of different types of water bottles. So let's test out a smaller water bottle. This is a Lark 17 ounce. I'm gonna try and slide it in. It's a little fidgety. You gotta find that sweet spot. Gets the job done. And then what's quite cool is that we have a drawstring right here. The drawstring would just help to secure that water bottle in place. So then you can do one of these. Check that out. What's up? Very few water bottle holders can accomplish this feat. Ow. But let's say you got a bigger water bottle, like this monster one liter Yeti. You'll also be pleasantly surprised to see that it also totally fits and passes the upside down test. A water bottle holder like this is gonna have its fair share of pros and cons. Pro number one is having the choice of water bottle holder or clean, seamless, no water bottle holder look. Pro number two is the elasticity of the material allows a variety of different water bottles. And pro number three is that the drawstring does help to keep the bottle in place. But on the flip side, I do think aesthetically it might look a little goofier than a water bottle holder that's like built into the side of the bag. And con number two is that over time, the elasticity of this might lose its strength. It will lose its strength over time. Overall, very cool, very innovative. The choice is ultimately up to you. Okay, that's a that's a bag. Let's sum it all up and talk about the overall pros and the cons. Overall pro number one, that aesthetic. It just slaps, it looks so good. Overall pro number two is an impressive amount of organization. And pro number three, it's a comfy bag. No doubt about that. But every bag has cons, everything has cons. And here are my personal cons with the rake bag. Con number one is the lack of the dangle stoppers on the shoulder straps and the sternum strap. Con number two is it, you know, it comes in at a pretty hefty price point. But for me, con number three is going to be that lack of accessibility with the buckles on these front two compartments and just that entire black hole of a main compartment. But if you're still here, there's a good chance that you're just, you're feeling it 
connection to this bag. You're looking at it, gives you that little warm feeling on the inside, you know? Like, we, we got potential. Well, just a reminder that if you are gonna make a purchase, we do ask that you do so using the first link in the description below. Thank you so much. But you also might be like, Aaron, I'm not sure. I'm not saying no, I'm not saying yes. I'm just saying, let's play the field a little bit. Let's see what else is out there. Here are some alternative recommendations. Alternative recommendation number one is going to be the Wandered Provoke. This is gonna be a great option for you if you want a roll top, but you're thinking to yourself, oh, that the thing's a bit complicated. I want something with a bit simpler of a user experience and potentially with more color options. The Wander Provoke is a great bag, super comfy. And to learn more about it, take a look at the description below and you'll find a link to our full review. Alternative suggestion number two is going to be the Manal roll top, which I don't have with me right now. I'm looking at you, Margaret. Margaret's claimed the roll top as her own. But yet again, it's another great roll top alternative with a bit more of a similar kind of mean looking aesthetic. But yet again, significantly simpler and stripped down and lighter too. It's a super light roll top. And to learn more about it, take a look at the description below and you'll find a link to our full review. And finally, alternative recommendation numero trace is going to be the Boundary Supply Errant. This will be for you if you're like, yeah, I like the aesthetic and, and the feature set and the organization of the rake, but I wanna kind of see what some other bags have and how they do it. Maybe I want something a little bit different. That's what the Errant brings to the table. There's honestly a lot of similarities between the two bags in terms of like this other feature set and just all these different things, but the Errant just do it a bit different. It's an iconic bag. And to learn more about it, simply watch this video right here. Also, if you got any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I personally respond to every single one myself. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Aaron. This is Nomad's Nation, and we'll catch you next time.